In this video, I'm going to be working out a projectile problem where a baseball is struck 1.2 meters off the ground, and we are going to do some calculations to see if it clears a 3 meter fence that is located 80 meters from its starting position. So our ball is struck initially at with a speed of 40 meters per second, and it is angled 30 degrees above the horizontal. So there are a lot of different components to this problem in order to um, make sure everything is organized and correct. Um, you have to take a look at all these components and make sure you have your ideas organized before executing this calculation. So just as we normally would, we want to make sure we set up an X and Y column so we can separate everything that's in the horizontal direction and everything that's in the vertical direction. And the reason why we do that is because the types of motion along each of these axes is different. This is all constant velocity because there are no forces going to the left or right as the object is in the air. And then in the vertical direction, there is the force of gravity. So that is going to cause the ball to be an accelerated motion in the vertical direction. Therefore, we're only going to use these top three formulas for our Y column and this one bottom formula for our X column. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and pull our 40 meter per second velocity and break it up into its X component and its Y component. So the way that we're going to do that is we are going to um, use our 30 degree angle and two different trig functions for the X component because we want the adjacent side along with the hypotenuse. We are going to do 40 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And then that's going to give us 34.64 meters per second. And then in the Y direction, um, we're going to want to use the side opposite of our 30 degree angle. So we're going to take 40 times the sine of 30 degrees. And then our Y component of that 40 meters per second is going to be 20 meters per second. Okay, so now we are um, ready to start dropping stuff into our X and Y column. In our X column, we have a velocity of 34.64. And then in the Y column, we have an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. This one we don't have to notate if it's initial or final because it's moving at a constant velocity. This side, it is just the initial velocity that is experiencing the acceleration due to gravity, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So the object is struck 1.2 meters off the ground. Actually, I made a mistake. It is zero. 0.2 meters off the ground. Um, if it's struck a 0.2 meters off the ground and has to clear a three meter fence, that it's delta Y has to be 2.8. So from 0.2 to three, if you subtract those two, it has a delta Y of 2.8. So I'm going to put delta Y equals 2.8 meters. Now something is going to happen to where it's going to reach 2.8 meters above that point over here and over here. So when I'm solving for time, um, I'm going to get a smaller time, which is when it reaches that 2.8 delta, delta Y on the rise. And then the second time, the longer one is going to be when it reaches 2.8 meters as it is falling down. So let's go ahead and plug that into a formula. So if we take a look at this one, um, we don't have a VF. And then this one, we don't have a VF as well. So we can solve for the time a few different ways. Um, what I can do is plug it into this second formula over here, and then it's going to look like this. Uh, delta Y equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clear some room. And then once I get this, um, I could set it equal to zero. So I'm just going to shift things around a little bit and it'd be zero equals one half times negative 9.8 is negative 4.9 T squared. I'm going to grab this 20 T plus 20 T. And then I subtracted 2.8 from both sides. So I got negative 2.8 on this side over here. So what I can do is use the quadratic formula or I could graph it and see the two points where the line crosses the X axis where the X is zero. And then that would give me my two different times. Either way, 
um, I would solve for t and I would get two different times, 0 0.15 seconds and 3.94 seconds. Okay, as I said before, I'm more interested in the larger time because that's what the, um, the time where it's gonna reach that 2.8 meters delta y um, at the second half of its trip. So now that I have that time, um, I can go ahead and slide it over here because time is not a vector. So it's the only value that can be moved back and forth between the two columns. And then using this formula over here, I have velocity equals delta x over t. So velocity times time would equal my delta x. So if I take my horizontal velocity of 34.64, multiply that by the time, that's gonna give me 78.8 meters. Okay, which means that my final answer is no, that my ball won't clear the fence because at the point where it is three meters off the ground, three meters off the ground is when the delta Y is 2.8 from its original point two, then it's only gonna reach 78.8 meters, which is slightly short of that 80. So it's gonna definitely bump into the fence because every point after here, it's gonna continue to have a lower and lower delta Y. So to sum things up, you wanna make sure you um, take your 40 meter per second initial velocity and break it up into its two components. And then from there, um, place everything into an X and Y column to make sure everything is organized. From there, you will typically solve for your T and then your time is a thing you can slide from your X to Y column or your Y to your X. So we decided to solve for T using this method over here. And then I grabbed my second time where it had the Delta Y on its um, second half of its trip so that I could use that time to plug in for my final formula to find my delta x, to compare that to the original 80 meters that was given to me in the um, question. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.